Episode 1 of The Guardians of Justice begins with the start of World War III in 1947. In this alt-historical world, an alien showed up and saved humanity from certain doom. Destroying our weapons and forcing humans to stop fighting in a single day, Marvelous Man is here to save us all. World peace appears possible, but forces conspire in the background to try and stop him. We then fast forward to the eagerly awaited Marvelous Man Day, with the big hero due to give a speech in front of the whole world. Only, he's clearly suffering from depression. After keeping humanity safe for four decades, Marvelous Man decides to escape his fate, using a gun with a Caltronite bullet, and shooting himself live on TV. Caltronite happens to be the only weakness he has, and as Marvelous Man passes away, the Speed, another hero, rushes over to see what this means for them. Marvelous Man's partner, Laura Lewis, is convinced that her husband has been murdered. There's no way he'd do this, and the only person able to try and get to the bottom of this is Nighthawk. He connects with the rest of the Guardians, determined to assume control of them for now, and make sure the planet stays protected no matter what. The President of the U.S., Nicholas E. Newcomb, gives an address on TV and promises to prevent the world from being consumed by nuclear war. Obviously with a name like Newcomb, that's easier said than done. Anyway, Nighthawk is well aware of this threat and urges the team to work together and continue fighting the good fight across the planet. This includes Chek's note stopping cyborg dinosaurs with guns on their back. However, their broadcast is interrupted by Addison Walker, who runs a private military group funded by a few dozen corporations. She points out that Marvelous Man was actually working on stopping nuclear war, and with the world on the brink of destruction, she wants Hawk to investigate the Guardians themselves, given one among them could be responsible. As the episode closes out, we cut to a gnarly crime scene down an alleyway, with numerous bodies killed and placed in the shape of a smiley face. Episode 2 of The Guardians of Justice begins with the world mourning the loss of Marvelous Man. It's been 36 hours since the suicide, but the world is acting like the heroes predicted with all-out chaos gripping the streets. The autopsy of Marvelous Man's body seems to hint that this was an actual suicide, with the autopsy not indicating anything out of the ordinary. The bullet that killed Marvelous Man was created by Lockwood Industries, Logan Lockwood hated Marvelous Man and was well known for this too. They're the ones who created the bullet, and they spent $1.2 billion to create the Godkiller bullet. In order to get to the bottom of this, Hawk sets out to interrogate Logan himself. With Logan tied up and primed for questioning, Logan coughs up that someone broke into his armory, where he stored the bullet several days before Marvelous Man's death. The footage goes static around the time of the break-in, leading Hawk to begin looking deeper into this. So naturally, he decides to interview and interrogate each of the Guardians at his base, the Hawk's Nest. Hawk confirms that they'll continue to meet until the investigation is over, with this masked vigilante eager to make sure they stick to their new mission briefings and keep the world safe from the never-ending threats. Speed isn't exactly happy with Hawk taking charge, and she'll quick to point this out too. Interestingly though, more information about Marvelous Man is drip-fed here, including news that he was seeing a therapist called Dr. Ravencroft. Given how many Batman references there have been this episode, it's only natural to wonder who the next Robin is, right? Well, that comes in the form of a kid called Little Wing, who's the sole survivor of a massacre that Hawk was too late to stop. Hawk decides to bring him along to see the good doctor, desperate to get some answers. According to Ravencroft, Marvelous Man mentions something called the Mellow Devil, but Hawk is not satisfied. He demands the book the doctor is about to publish be pulled from publication, which he eventually does and goes into hiding soon after. And hiding leads to him being killed. Another character that's part of this superhero shindig is Red Talanaka. Mick Mason. He used to work with Hawk, but is now working for the president as a ruthless assassin. With Red Talon refusing to help with the investigation, Hawk turns his attention to the Cortex, a handy tool for neurosensing. So naturally, Hawk hooks himself up to the machine, narrowing down the list of suspects on the planet that could break into Lockwood. That list brings up two names. Motion Blur and the Speed. Episode 3 of The Guardians of Justice begins with a look at the financial terrorist group known as Anubis. 
The threat of World War IV and nuclear war is very much on the horizon, and it doesn't help that President Newcomb antagonizes Russia, telling them on TV that they're ready for them. One person watching this in disdain is the premier of the Soviet Union, Boris Smirnov. He doesn't trust America and is paranoid that they'll soon be able to harness marvelous man's power to use against them. If that happens, Boris promises to strike first. Meanwhile, Hawk uses Cortex to find where motion blur is. Unfortunately, this plus Hawk investigating the Guardians of Justice breaks on the news, and the public find themselves losing faith in the heroes. Hawk and the Guardians unite to try and take out Anubis Queen, who happens to be the dictator in charge of the group Anubis. However, the president is already on the case, and that comes from using Red Talon and Spider-Man. Or, well, this show's version of him anyway, called Sepia Spider. Even the armor looks the same. Sepia Spider bursts into the headquarters, taking out the soldiers, but eventually being stopped by Anubis Queen, who begins interrogating him for answers. Getting nowhere, he's eventually shot Ed, live on air. With things looking bleak, Hawk speaks to Red Talon and tells him they need to fight terrorism with voyeurism. Specifically, they need Red Talon to help save face and not only make America look good, but also show that they won't succumb to terrorists. Of course, the whole thing is turned into a game, with Red Talon diving into the thick of the action through a first-person point of view shot. Unfortunately, he too meets a grisly end when a grenade explodes at his feet. With the president angry and bombing anywhere for a distraction, Boris retaliates by moving his troops into Canada and preparing to strike. With the Guardians down on luck and in need of a win, it falls to Little Wing, Hawk's deadly protege, who manages to kill General Orsted and his troops. However, it doesn't stop Anubis's rampage, as they take to the screens again, and confirm that the Guardians are definitely responsible for killing Marvelous Man. Episode 4 of The Guardians of Justice begins with the Guardians preparing for a big PR campaign. Specifically, they're going to appear on the Phil Hart show to try and save face. Just before they do though, an explosion rocks Lockwood Industries. Meanwhile, Awesome Man phones Speed and tries to arrange meeting up together. He struggles to get his words out and eventually tells her he's lonely. Since Marvelous Man and Sepia Spider's death, he's realized that life is short. Speed understands how he's feeling, and the pair agree to meet for a date. Hawk heads back to base after interrogating King Tsunami, learning some rather juicy scandalous details. Now, it turns out Marvelous Man's partner, Laura, was cheating on him with King Tsunami. Hawk shows up to see the latter, who admits it was exhausting being with the world's most perfect man. The trouble stemmed from the fact the pair had nothing in common. Laura felt like she was drowning in his shadow, and the pair slowly drifted apart. Remember Mellow Devil? It's something Dr. Ravencroft mentioned before and it seems like it's actually a drug. It connects their users to something higher and promises true happiness. The drug has completely exploded across the city, with the police force unable to handle just how widespread this has become. Investigating further, Hawk learns that Black Bow and Blue Scream and other two guardians were heavy users of Mellow Devil and Marvelous Man sussed them out. Marvelous Man threatened to revoke their membership to the Guardians and tell the media everything. The night Marvelous Man died though, both Black Bow and Blue Scream have an alibi. They were both getting high, deciding to have one more night of blocking out the horrors they've experienced through their time as heroes. This is something Hawk can relate to, but implores them to stand up and reach out to all those addicts, bringing them to the Citadel. He promises to instill hope again, remaining dead set on finding Marvelous Man's killer. Episode 5 of The Guardians of Justice begins with Nighthawk turning to Golden Goddess as the next guardian to interrogate. He heads off to visit her in her home, the Exile Realm. Hawk is determined to get to the bottom of Marvelous Man's emotional state just before he died. Both Marvelous Man and Golden Goddess were actually working together to take her down a guy called Commander Zed. This occurred days before his death. However, there's no love lost between Goddess and Marvelous Man, as Goddess reflects on how weak he really was, likening his mental state to a child. As she starts using her manipulative powers against Hawk, Awesome Man senses this from afar and shows up to stop her, saving Hawk in the process. Together, the pair head back to the Hawk's nest, 
where Hawk admits he doesn't need to interrogate Awesome Man. Why? Well, he knows the guy has an alibi. However, things are complicated when Awesome Man and Speed grow closer together, falling in love and eventually, well, making love. While that's all well and good, it also causes big problems within the Guardian ranks. As Hawk explains to Little Wing, this could mean that they're emotionally compromised. This is something typified through a hero called the Meow. After her lover was killed, this docile hero lashed out and went on a bloody rampage, gaining revenge on the crooked cops responsible by shooting them all dead. Given the superhero code they live by, Marvelous Man threw her into Bedlam Asylum. Unfortunately, when she got out she became part of a crime syndicate. However, she's also partly good too. This is just as well, given she's Hawk's next port of call. Speaking to Meow about the case, she mentions how the Mellow Devil is a lucrative drug and knows a guy who could be responsible for distributing this out. Meanwhile, Speed receives a call from Motion Blur, who admits to stealing the Caltronite bullet from Lockwood. He also mentions how he's been set up by someone who has got inside his head. The Speed wants to take him in for questioning, but he's having none of it. The pair do inevitably fight, with the Speed coming out on top with bone-crunching precision. On his knees, Blur admits that Marvelous Man died of his own accord. But did he really? Episode 6 of The Guardians of Justice begins at Bedlam Asylum, as highlights of Mind Master's interviewed is broadcast out. He talks about his history, specifically how his father was an abuser. In the middle of this interview, the broadcast is interrupted by an advert for Mellow Devil. This cuts us back to the present, as we see Hawk following up on Meow's lead. Her contact has given him four different warehouses to check out. So in typical Montage fashion, Hawk moves from one to the next, eventually finding the area where Mellow Devil was originally being created. However, the place has long been abandoned. Fragments of Mellow Devil is still there though and running it through the Cortex system, it seems to him that Mind Master and, by extension, Marvelous Man, were both there. However, there's a hidden memory that Cortex manages to access, which happens to be Nighthawks. The truth is, Mind Master is actually still alive and didn't die all those years ago after all. This was hidden from Hawk, who realizes Marvelous Man has lied to him all this time. Communicating with Walker, she warns that nuclear war is upon them and if they're not careful, it could spell the end of the world. Hawk steps up his interrogation, tracking down Mind Master and pressuring him to reveal the truth. Mind Master controlled Motion Blur to steal the bullet from Lockwood, which in turn was given to Marvelous Man for him to kill himself. But why? For what end? Well, it turns out we've been looking at things all wrong. Mind Master and Marvelous Man were in love, but Mind Master wanted Marvelous Man to come clean about their relationship. Marvelous Man couldn't take the guilt, partly thanks to Laura cheating on him, and decided to kill himself. Meanwhile, Logan lures Speed out to his secret lair, revealing that Hawk is actually a bad guy and a supervillain. She doesn't believe it, but when Speed checks the Lockwood simulation, she realizes that what Logan has said is true. Hawk has been recruiting disillusioned people and building his army at the Citadel. That's not how the news frames it though, with the Russians holding off from starting nuclear war by listening into the warp truth. According to the news, Mind Master was working with the rogue terrorist nation Anubis and pushing them into nuclear war. Hawk is the true hero in this version of events, causing everyone to work together. And as Hawk kills Mind Master in cold blood, it's distorted to look like a heroic act. Speed seems to be the only hope here to expose the truth and stop this fascist future from coming to fruition. As she leaves Logan's place, she warns the remaining groggy soldier that she's coming for Hawk. Why did Hawk turn evil? Episode 7 of The Guardians of Justice begins with Speed commentating how the fall to villainy is always thanks to a single moment that they believe is justifiable. That moment comes from Hawk killing Mr. Smiles. Now, Smiles is actually a clown-faced alias for Hawk's army to do his bidding, and with Hawk already on the path to villainy, Marvelous Man's death opened the floodgates for Hawk to put his plan into action. What is Hawk's plan to conquer the world? With Anubis blamed for Marvelous Man's death, Hawk launches his global army to eradicate them, deciding to burn the villainous nation to the ground, killing innocent civilians in the process. 
Hawk's global defense is given the nod by those around the globe who see this as a necessary action to lead them to salvation and allow peace to blanket Earth. Hawk intends to use Mind Master's powers to conquer the world, with Walker watching on and helping to fund his dastardly plan. The only ones left to try and stop that are awesome man and speed. Mind Master's serum has allowed the world to fall into a docile peace, leaving awesome man conflicted. He reflects on Hawk telling him he's doing this for the greater good, and wonders whether that's actually true or not. What is the plan to stop Hawk? Speed manages to talk him around though, pointing out that this is Hawk's future, not humanity's as a whole. He decides to team up with Speed and stop Hawk, delivering true justice. In order to do that, Awesome Man wants Speed to go full force and use her powers to make it into the Hawk's nest and open the portal. Once she's in the Citadel, all the soldiers will attack her, but while she's distracted with fighting off the army, Awesome Man will collect up all the Guardians to strike back together. Awesome Man implores Speed not to engage, instead resetting the teleporters on his command, allowing the Guardians to break in and stop Hawk before it's too late. Unfortunately, Hawk is ready for Speed when she shows, using a power dampening orb that Marvelous Man has, just in case any of them went rogue. With Speed's powers diminished, Hawk urges her to team up. Instead, Speed uses her kung fu moves to attack in real time, eventually destroying the orb and attacking the soldiers. Who's awesome man? Does Speed die? Hawk tries to talk Speed around, but his ideology doesn't work on her. So he decides to play his trump card Little Wing. In another surprising twist, Little Wing inexplicably changes into awesome man. He chokes out Speed, with blood running from her eyes, as he remains loyal to Hawk. So what was awesome man's plan? Well, it turns out Hawk told him to keep Speed under control and let her see things their way. If not, then she'd need to be taken out. Make me proud, son, he said. Awesome man kills Speed and brutally rips her spine out. However, the threat to the world is not over. A new world ending menaces on the horizon in the form of Galactron, a monstrous entity intending to destroy everything. How does Guardians of Justice end? Hawk heard this message courtesy of a broadcast from Marvelous Man's father. Since then, he's been working on a plan to unite the world all under the banner of the Hawk. But of course, killing Marvelous Man was a necessary evil in order to unite everyone. But yet what if he's done all of this and there is no world-ending threat? Who created Anubis? Why did the Night Eagle build an army? The series is often aligned, albeit in a comical way, with geopolitical events taking place in the real world. The Anubis, a terrorist group with close ties to Russia, are believed to be behind Marvelous Man's death. Although the Russian president lifted Anubis's support following his tragic fate at the hands of winglets, that wasn't the case. The Anubis family, headed by Queen Anubis, also occupied Van Dawson's studio for publicity. By the end of the puzzling ending, we know it was the Night Eagle who created Anubis. While assembling his troops to fight real wars, he used spectacles to divert the attention of the global public. Nighthawk built a private army with government help, and his overt crackdown on terrorists earned the president a four-year term. However, the real reason behind his adventure is a prophecy leaked by the artificial intelligence cortex. There is a titan in the universe named Galacrin who intends to devour planets with intelligent life forms. According to Fantastic Man's father, the Titan may consider Earth as his next prey, while the Night Eagle assembles an army to deal with an alien threat. However, we must consider the possibility that Cortex tricked Nighthawk into taking such a radical measure. Titan may never find Earth the voice of speed expresses her suspicion in Nighthawk's heart. The finale of Guardians of Justice bows out with a decent last episode, one that sees Speed meet a horrible demise, and everything ending on a rather uneasy and somber note. What if Hawk is wrong? What if there is no world-ending threat? It's certainly something that provides food for thought, as we were left to wonder if Hawk's actions were completely pointless or not. Despite the decent themes, Guardians has struggled a lot with its characterization. The show has been pretty pacey and rocketed through so many ideas without actually fleshing much of it out in a way to make these twists feel more momentous. As an easy, breezy and cheesy superhero satire, Guardians of Justice bows out with a decent enough conclusion, one that's certainly going to be an acquired taste.